So, um, climate change, is it, is it actually happening? Is it real or is it just something that the media hypes up? The climate is always fluctuating, it has done, it will continue to do so. I think just the media is just hyping it up to be more bigger than it actually is. I'm not one to say that we can actually say that it's definitely happening. I think there is evidence to suggest that it may be happening, but I'm not happy that we absolutely say it outrightly, we've got it sorted out and we know this is what's going to happen. Are you anyway. denying that it's happening then? Oh, I'm not denying that it's happening, I'm denying that we can say that it's definitely happening. I'm saying we can try and deal with it just in case that it is. I don't really think there's a point in doing anything about it because I don't really think it's happening, in all honesty. Well, what about those pictures I've seen of like the Arctic Circle when it's like shrinking and shrinking, proof that the world is but getting warmer? Those are warmer. pictures, not, you, don't, you don't know, I don't know. Regardless of whether it's happening or not, we need to look at our lifestyles and look at whether it's necessary. I don't think things like switching off like your TV or saving energy is going to make much of a difference. Personally. Well, it's two different questions. It's, it's what you deal with. It's either that we change our technology to deal with this problem or we change our, our way of life. And to be honest, I don't think way of life is going to be changed. And especially as all these developing countries are going to need to go through industrialization and become capitalist countries, then we've done that. And we're promoting actually that to happen by giving them aid in the first place that they can develop. And that is the stage of, that is the route through development that every country takes. So I think George Bush, no, I think George Bush is, that, this is one of the things that he did get right, is that the focus needs to be on technology rather than changing what we do. Yeah, we can make changes, it will help. But I don't think that's going to solve the problem. But the thing is, that a couple of solar panels here and there, it's not really going to compete against all the factories that are still in motion, do you know what I mean? All the cars that are still being produced. Yeah. Well, so. I agree because I don't think solar panels and wind turbines and things like that are going to be the solution to the problem, which I think we have to go right back into research and development. The, these sort of renewable energy sources aren't producing nearly enough m amount of energy that we need as a country. We're used to living in the way that we live, and I like the way that I live sometimes, Jess. I, I like the fact that I get into my car, but it's this whole kind of lifestyle change. I don't know that I personally can actually do. Some people can do it, but it's, uh, I don't think I can actually do it. But one, one car in 1987 produced the same amount of emissions as nine cars in 2000 did. So I think that's the way forward rather than, this is what I'm saying, that's the way forward rather than you not using the car. So do, you think, do you think that people's attitudes should actually change at all or do you think that the technology should be changed for them so they don't actually have to have the responsibility? Yeah, I sure think we should be aware of it and, and, and yeah, if we can make changes that won't damage our lifestyles then we should make them. If we're going to uh, continue to, to generate electricity, there is no way to do that without looking at um, alternatives and changing the way we live. We, we can't continue to, to find coal uh, and keep burning it or um, keep burying uh, uranium for, for nuclear power stations. We can't keep doing it. So if you could only advocate one option, you'd advocate changing the way of life over changing technology that deals with oh, no, way the way of life. Oh, the, no, the changing technology. In order to meet the way we live, we have to change the technology. And actually changing the technology will change the way we live. It, it goes hand in hand. With climate change, it seems to have this kind of... Climate change is something that isn't really, not isn't happening in the UK, but people tend to associate it with kind of developing countries and it being something which is having a worse effect in the developing world. Do people kind of think that we might care more about climate change if actually around us there was extreme weather, if we were experiencing heavy It is happening around us, like snow in March or heavy snowfall in February. Something is happening. I don't know whether to call it climate change, I don't know whether to call it global warming, but something weird is definitely happening because it's summer now and like we have rain, we've had sun today, we've had wind. This is England, this is our summer, mm. this, is all, this is what I know it to be. In the Bible, in Revelation, it says, you know, there are going to be natural disasters towards the end of the world. Is it something that we should just let happen, that we shouldn't really interfere in? Like, because you do have people that sort of say that the environment and the, the world There's is no sort of God's domain and that we shouldn't really be interfering in something. I've, I've heard it on a platform, someone saying that um, the world is going to end, so it doesn't matter how much pollution we cause. It was Adam's sole responsibility to look after the earth. That's the only thing, really, that God told him to do. He fast up himself with a tree and go eat the fruit and mess up, do you know what I mean, whole <laughs> civilization. But really, the only thing that he was actually shut to was to tend to the garden kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I think that definitely still applies today. It will be inevitable that it will sort of crash one day, but I still think that we should definitely try and make a difference. As regards to this, you get three types of people. You get those that are uh, aware and active. You get those who... Uh, not in my backyard, so they, they're aware of it and they want it to, to improve, but I don't want you to, uh, I don't want to change anything that I do. And you get the kind of don't know, don't care, so 
perhaps if something did happen, then more people would be swayed towards the right, I better get active then. But the comparison I'd like to make is that sin is inevitable. I think you'd all agree that we will sin, and that's, that, that's, that's the way we were created. But we still try not to sin, even though we know it's going to happen. So perhaps even if it's not inevitable, perhaps we can make a difference. But as far as I see, we might as well try. We've got nothing to lose.